Welcome back to Invested, I'm Lockie, and today we'll get NVIDIA stock, the Semiconductor King. Despite being down around 19.8% year to date, over the past one month alone, the stock's actually risen 6.08% in value. So with NVIDIA staging a reasonable comeback over the past month, the question naturally becomes, is the stock now overvalued, or is there still a buying opportunity present? Well today, I'm going to be answering that for you. I'm going to be breaking down the business, focusing on all the key factors. It's financial strength, profitability, growth and management, then give you a current valuation and price target for the stock going forward, telling you if Nvidia is a buy, hold or sell at this time. If you enjoy this type of content, then please drop us a like down below, hit subscribe if you haven't already, and let's get into it. So opening up our screener here, we're going to start off by assessing the financial strength of Nvidia. How financially strong is Nvidia as a company, and how likely is it that Nvidia can endure a financial downturn going forward? Well, if we come down here and have a look at the financial strength metrics, and of course, when assessing the financial strength of any large company, there's really one key metric we focus on, and that is the cash to debt ratio. The cash the business currently has on hand to meet their short term and long term debts outstanding. And the current cash debt ratio for Nvidia is 1.82 indicating that for every dollar of debt on the company's balance sheet, they have $1.82 in cash to meet that debt obligation, so a fairly advantageous financial position. This cash to debt ratio indicates that if Nvidia's management so desired, they could instantaneously pay off all the debt present on their balance sheet and still retain the equivalent of $0.82 cents in cash relative to that 1 to 1 ratio to continue to reinvest and build out their business going forward, so a great degree of financial strength exuded by this cash to debt ratio. And when you combine this favorable cash to debt ratio with the massive amounts of free cash flow flowing into Nvidia's business on a daily basis, ever increasing free cash flow from the ever increasing demand for their chip products, you begin to realize just how financially strong Nvidia is as a company. This immense degree of financial strength is accentuated by the high Altman score the company has been assigned. The company has been assigned an Altman score of 22.65, indicating a great degree of safety with the business and very little risk of financial default in the event of a downturn. In the event of a downturn, NVIDIA is exceptionally well positioned with a large amount of cash on hand and consistent cash flows flowing in from their operations, enabling them not only to endure a financial downturn, but also reinvest and reinvigorate growth coming out of a pullback. So on a financial strength basis, NVIDIA is exceptionally well positioned. Large amounts of cash on hand and consistent operational cash flows, leaving them with not only financial stability, but also a great degree of financial agility. But that is simply the financial strength of NVIDIA. Now, let's have a look at profitability. Let's see how profitable NVIDIA is as a company. So if we come over here to profitability, and of course, when assessing the profitability of any large firm, there's really four key things we focus on. Number one is the operating margins. Number two, the net margins. Three, the returns on equity. And number four, the returns on assets. So let's come over here and start with the margins. You can see operating margins of 37.31% and net margins of 36.24%. Both outstanding. Net margins of 36.24% indicates that for every dollar of revenue that comes into NVIDIA's business, they retain about 36% of that as pure profit, so an immense degree of profitability. On both an industry basis, historically for the company, and across businesses more broadly, these net margins position NVIDIA as one of the single most profitable and attractive companies in the world on a net margins basis. An absurd degree of profitability for a business at this scale, NVIDIA is a very attractive bet in terms of profitability. But now let's have a look at returns on equity and returns on assets to get an idea of how NVIDIA's management are allocating their capital. So if we come down here to returns on equity and returns on assets, and of course, when assessing a wonderful business, we typically look for returns on equity and returns on assets around 20%. So now let's see what NVIDIA is producing. Returns on equity of 45.48% and returns on assets of 26.64%. Both, yet again, phenomenal. Returns on equity of 45.48% indicates not only an immense degree of underlying quality in NVIDIA's business model, but also a tremendous degree of management competency. Clearly, the management within NVIDIA are allocating their capital exceptionally well to make high returns on equity, and that's indicative of this fantastic returns on equity figure. More than doubling our 20% target, it exudes the immense degree of quality within NVIDIA as a business. And although returns on assets isn't quite as high, returns on assets of 26.64% is well in excess of our 20% target, and indicates once again an immense degree of underlying quality in NVIDIA's business model. A business model in which tremendously high returns on assets can be made with a fair degree of ease. So based upon all the metrics we assess in terms of profitability, the operating margins, net margins, returns on equity, and returns on assets, the profitability of NVIDIA is simply outstanding. An extremely profitable business, and the strong net margins are very, very attractive, taking into account the high degree of inflation taking place within the marketplace right now. So on a financial strength basis, they're well positioned by virtue of a large amount of cash on hand and consistent cash flows flowing in from their operations. And on a profitability basis, they're absolutely world class. But now let's get an idea of how much NVIDIA is worth as a company. 
because although it may be a wonderful business, if it's not trading at a fair valuation, then buying into the stock right now could lead to losses in the short to medium term. So let's come down here and have a look at some basic valuation ranks. And of course, when assessing a business based upon these simple valuation ranks, there's a lot of different ratios we can use to assess the business. We've got the PB ratio, PS ratio, the current ratio, quick ratio, cash ratio, the PEG ratio, the EV to EBITDA ratio, all these different fancy, fancy ratios. But when it comes to assessing a business based upon these simple ratios, there's really only one I use. And that's the PE ratio, the price to earnings ratio. And the current price to earnings ratio for NVIDIA is 62.78, a fairly high PE, indicating a large degree of growth assumption priced into the stock going forward. Investors in the broader market believe that NVIDIA can continue to grow at a fairly high rate going forward over the next 10 to 15 years. Growth rates anywhere from 25 to 30% on both an earnings per share basis and free cash flow basis going forward over the next decade. And that's what this high PE signifies. Whether or not this high PE indicates the company is over or undervalued is up for debate. What we are going to do later on is run a full DCF analysis breaking down the company's earnings per share and free cash flow on a more granular level to give you a better idea of exactly how much the company's worth and exactly how much you should be paying per share for the company. So keep watching for that one. But before we get started on our DCF analysis, I want to break down some basic financial data associated with NVIDIA. So if we come over here, we can see the revenue and the income from NVIDIA between 2011 and 2022. You can see back in 2011, revenue was around 3,543 and net income of 253. And then in 2022, revenue of 26914 and net income of 9752 So an exponential degree of growth on both the revenue and net income basis over the past decade. Massive, massive growth, indicative once again of not only a tremendous degree of underlying quality in NVIDIA's business model, but also a tremendous degree of management competency. Clearly, the management within NVIDIA are allocating their capital exceptionally well to simulate consistent revenue and net income growth over time at a highly exponential rate. Combining a strong underlying business with an exceptional management team in place, NVIDIA poses a very attractive long-term investment prospect. Coming over here to the cash-to-debt ratio of the company over time, you can see a very similar exponential trend. Over the past decade, more and more cash being accumulated by NVIDIA. Back in 2011, cash on hand of around 2,490 and debt of 23. And then in 2021, cash on hand of 21,208 and debt of 11,687. So massive, massive amounts of cash building up on NVIDIA's balance sheet, but also employing a larger degree of debt over time. Historically, NVIDIA is now employing more debt than ever before in their history, and some investors may feel that by employing such a large amount of debt on their balance sheet, NVIDIA may be creating a degree of leverage risk within their operation, employing too much debt relative to cash, and thus exposing the company to default in the event of a financial downturn. This, however, I don't believe is the case at all. With a massive, massive amount of cash on hand relative to their debt, and the operational cash flows flowing in from their core chip sales, NVIDIA is in an exceptionally strong financial position. If they so desired, they could instantaneously pay down its debt obligations whilst continuing to reinvest and build out their business going forward. So when it comes to the financial stability of NVIDIA, I have very, very little concern. Coming down here to returns on capital, you can see fairly consistent returns on capital over the past decade. With the exception of 2011, when they achieved returns on capital of 0%, every other year has provided substantial returns on capital. Returns on capital in 2022 of 50%. Exceptional for a company of this size, a $600 billion company, making returns on capital of around 50% is absolutely extraordinary. And although they're not quite as high as the returns on capital achieved in 2018 of 99%, this drop off in returns on capital is not indicative of business underperformance as much as a growing business. Naturally, as companies grow and build out their revenue streams, lower returns on capital are made over time, and that's completely understandable, especially taking into account the size of NVIDIA's business. If returns on capital were to drop off even more, returns on capital more around 20-25% to 25 over the long term for the company, that would be absolutely fine, given the scale and nature of NVIDIA's operation. So although we have seen a slight declining trend in terms of returns on capital, it's absolutely fine taking into account the maturity and scale of the business. So that's some basic financial data associated with NVIDIA, the PE ratio to give an idea of what the company may be worth, and also some financial strength and profitability metrics to give you an idea of how the business is performing. But if we really want to understand what NVIDIA is worth as a company, and how much we should be paying for each individual share of the stock, then we'd have to run something called a DCF analysis, a discounted cash flow analysis. And as Warren Buffett always says, the value of any business is the cash flow that it will return to its shareholders between now and Judgment Day. And that's exactly what a DCF tells us. We're going to run a DCF on both an earnings per share basis and a free cash flow basis to give us an idea of how much earnings the company is bringing in and how much of that is translating to free cash flow the company can actually use to expand and grow their operations going forward. So if we come down here, we're going to start off on an earnings per share basis. And if we come down here, we can see the earnings per share growth rates over the past 10, 5, and 1 year period. Over the past 10 years, it's been around 34.5%, so massive, massive growth over the past decade. 5 years, a slightly lower growth rate of 31.7%. 
Over the past one year, a massive increase in growth of 123.2%, of course tied to inherently increased demand for NVIDIA's products during the pandemic. So with such an exponential rise in earnings for NVIDIA over the past year, do I believe they will continue to grow at this rate going forward? Do I think they'll keep compounding at 123% every single year for the next decade? Absolutely not. That growth rate is far, far too high. And taking into account the massive amounts of growth NVIDIA has already experienced, but also accounting for the favorable secular trends around the company going forward, I believe a growth rate more aligned with the 10-year and 5-year growth rates of the firm would be more justified for the company going forward. So taking those growth rates into account, we're going to utilize an earnings per share growth rate of 30% going forward over the next decade. This growth rate of 30% is slightly lower than the 5-year and 10-year rates, and thus slightly more conservative, taking into account the massive amounts of growth NVIDIA has already experienced as a business, but also still a fairly high rate of growth, indicating the highly positive secular trends around the business, the runway for tremendous amounts of growth going forward, and as the business continues to both consolidate its core revenue streams whilst expanding into new areas, I believe the company can perpetuate meaningful growth at that 30% level going forward over the next 10 years, and thus a 30% rate of growth would be justified. So utilizing that 30% growth rate going forward over the next decade on an earnings per share basis, utilizing our discount rate of 8%, 8% of course is the long run return of the stock market, and thus a fair rate at which to discount our cash flows, then our earnings per share figure of $3.85, taken down here for a 12-month trailing basis, we come up to a fair value price target for NVIDIA of $323.29, signifying about 25% short-term upside to the stock, and that the stock is trading substantially below its intrinsic value, creating a very, very appealing buying opportunity. For both value investors looking for short-term upside in the stock, and long-term orientated growth investors looking to buy a wonderful company below its intrinsic value, then hold for long-term as the company compounds and grows its earnings over time, both those types of investors have something to talk about when it comes to NVIDIA stock. So on an earnings per share basis, a very advantageous buy. But that is simply an earnings per share valuation. Now, let's have a look at a free cash flow valuation to give us an idea of how much those earnings translate to free cash flow the company can actually use to expand and grow their operations going forward. So if we come down here, we're going to switch over to free cash flow. If we come down here, we can see the free cash flow growth rates over the past 10, 5, and 1 year period. You can see very similar to the growth rates on an earnings per share basis. Over the past 10 years, a growth rate of around 30.1%. Five years, a slightly accelerating growth rate of 34.4%. Over the past one year, yet again, another massive jump inherently tied to increased demand for their products during the pandemic, a one-year free cash flow growth rate of 71.6%. Now, once more, do I believe they'll continue to compound at this high rate going forward over the next decade? Do I think they'll keep growing at 71% every single year for the next 10 years? Absolutely not. That growth rate, again, is far, far too high. And I think once more, a far more reasonable growth rate for the company going forward over the next 10 years or so would be more in line with the 10-year and 5-year growth rates of the firm. So taking these numbers into account and also taking into account the inherent intertwinement of earnings per share and free cash flow on NVIDIA's balance sheet, it's naturally a very free cash flow accretive company. I believe that once again, utilizing a growth rate of around 30% on a free cash flow basis would be justified for the company. This growth rate of 30% takes into account the intertwinement of growth between earnings per share and free cash flow for NVIDIA, the potential for additional free cash flow accretion going forward over the next decade, and still a fairly high growth rate taking into account the highly positive secular trends around the business and the potential for a tremendous degree of growth going forward into the future. So utilizing that growth rate of 30% going forward over the next decade on a free cash flow basis, once again with our discount rate of 8%, and then our free cash flow per share figure of $3.20, taken down here for a 12-month trailing basis, we come up to a fair value price target for NVIDIA, slightly lower of $269.27. So a slightly lower price target, but still indicating a fair degree of potential upside in NVIDIA stock. As much as 10% short-term upside in the stock, creating a small opportunity for value-oriented investors, but also a far more advantageous opportunity for long-term oriented investors looking to buy a wonderful company below its intrinsic value, then hold for long-term as the company compounds and grows its earnings over time. So as you can see on both an earnings per share basis and a free cash flow basis, it appears if NVIDIA is trading below its intrinsic value, creating a fairly advantageous buying opportunity. But which of these valuations makes more sense for NVIDIA? Which of these valuations gives us a better idea of exactly how much the company is worth and exactly how much we should be paying per share for the company? Well, given the inherent underlying growth nature of NVIDIA as a business, it's very much a growing company, compounding its revenues and earnings per share at an exponential rate going forward. And given investors and the market's tendency more broadly to value growing companies based upon their earnings per share growth rather than their free cash flow accretion, I'd be more inclined to utilize our earnings per share valuation as my current valuation for the company. And so my current valuation for NVIDIA stock is going to be $323.29, signifying about 25% short-term upside to the stock, and that the stock is an advantageous buying opportunity on both a short-term and long-term basis. Going forward, I believe NVIDIA is exceptionally well positioned to perpetuate meaningful growth going forward over the next 10, 15 years, and even beyond. As they continue to expand into high-growth areas, such as gaming, data centers, and self-driving technology, 
I believe the company can continue to grow at a meaningful rate going forward into the foreseeable future. A company with a wide, wide economic moat, a tremendous degree of profitability, and a formidable degree of financial strength, managed by an exceptional management team, NVIDIA is a high quality company trading below its intrinsic value, and for me right now, taking into account all these factors, the stock for me right now as a long term hold appears to be a buy. So that was my brief yet somewhat detailed valuation of NVIDIA stock. A company with a tremendous degree of financial strength by virtue of a large amount of cash on hand, and consistent cash flows flowing in from the operations, profitability of an impressive degree once more, with net margins of 36.24%, outstanding returns on equity of 45.48%, and formidable returns on assets of 26.64%. The company appears to be trading substantially below its intrinsic value, creating an advantageous buying opportunity on both a short-term and long-term basis, and given the high quality nature of the company, the positive circular trends around the business, and the appealing valuation at present, Nvidia stock for me right now appears to be a buy. If you enjoyed this video, perhaps you learned something more about Nvidia as a stock or as a company, then please drop us a like down below, hit subscribe if you haven't already. If there's a company you want me to talk about in the next video, then please just comment down below and I'll see if I can get onto it. But until then, thank you, and I'll see you in the next one.